None of the content on this or any episode of the Kratom Science Podcast, Kratom Science Journal Club, or on any page of KratomScience.com is intended, nor should it be considered medical claims or medical advice. This is the Kratom Science Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Gallagher, blog and social media writer for KratomScience.com, your source for all things Kratom. Returning to the podcast is EU and Government Relations Manager for the European Kratom Alliance, Jacob Gentala. Jacob is here to talk about Kratom in the Czech Republic. Several groups and the National Drug Policy Coordinator would like to see Kratom regulated, but a moral panic around youth Kratom use in the country could see Kratom banned. There's some... Recent news from Czech Republic, and um, so you have been in Czech Republic recently. How recently were you there, and and uh, how much time have you spent there, say, in the past year? Okay, uh, so regarding Czech Republic, this is a project that we've been working on uh, with the government of the Czech Republic uh, for about a year right now. Yeah, so let's say we started working at, uh, like, we were made aware that uh, the government is planning on either regulation or prohibition of Kratom uh, last year, like last year, December. And uh, eventually, uh, we start, we've been contacted uh, by our associates in uh, Czech Republic, uh, saying that the government is willing to work on legislation. And basically, we had initial meeting with the government of Czech Republic uh, in March last year. Like it was the end of March, uh, oh, sorry, this year. Well, so it was the beginning of March. No, no, sorry, end of March, beginning of April. This was uh, like our first initial meeting when we were discussing uh, like different possibilities how to regulate Kratom because. Uh, uh, in uh, European sphere and legislation-wise, kratom is fairly difficult substance not to regulate. And basically, last month, so in November, uh, together with the Czech Slovakian Kratom Association, I participated in several meetings uh, with the Ministry of Health, uh, National no, Drug Policy Coordinator, and his team. And eventually, we were able to uh, uh, convey a new type of legislation that will that will allow for sales of kratom in Czech Republic as a fully regulated market, which will be the first one in Europe. Because, as I told you before, kratom is still very much in the gray zone over here. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, without addressing issues with the European Union, we wouldn't be able to you know, regulate Kratom the way we wanted. So essentially with the government of the Czech Republic, we came up with the new measure that will, for example, uh, that will allow not only for the regulation of Kratom, but also a couple of other you know, substances. What is the drug policy like in Czech Republic? Uh, as far as I can tell, it's kind of a pretty liberal. It's been a pretty liberal policy there, I think, since maybe 1989. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what what does that look like in Czech Republic? Is is mm -hmm. marijuana okay. legal, for example? Yeah, generally, no, I would say Czech Republic is probably the most liberal country uh, in that region of Europe. So in, uh, in Central Eastern Europe, Czech Republic is probably the most liberal country uh, with regards to drug policies. That's uh, thanks in big measure to the um, National uh, Drug Policy Coordinator, uh, Mr. Jindřich Vopodžil, a very interesting person. He has been yeah. on forefront of uh, legalization and regulation of different substances in uh, Czech Republic since the early 1990s. And he is basically the mastermind behind the new regulation that will allow for uh, legislation of Kratom, similarly to what is going on right now in the USA. But uh, regarding the Czech Republic overall, I have to say the country has 
potential to be much more liberal than the Netherlands, for example. So it's like decriminalized for possession of drugs. Is that accurate? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right now, it's also like the criminalization and possession of drugs is pretty much uh, already implemented. What Czech Republic is doing over here, I have to give special thanks to Mr. Vobodžio and his team mm -hmm. that they were able to come up with a type of legislation that will allow for regulation of kratom, magic mushrooms and cannabis. Uh, as a first type of uh, regulation in Europe and perhaps worldwide, when uh, they are creating a new type of legal category, which allows for this kind of regulation. Like when I was in November in Czech Republic, it was really insane <laughs> when it comes to buying, uh, for example, weed. It's possible to buy it pretty much on every single corner of the there. Oh, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that is something new because like usually I visit not Prague at least once a year. So last time when I was in Prague, I haven't really seen cannabis being so widespread. But this time, uh, basically, I noticed that there were like over the specialized stores that were selling cannabis just like over here in the Netherlands or say in uh, Spain. The National Drug Policy Coordinator, uh, Indris yeah. Barrio, he seems to favor things like decriminalization and tr and drug treatment as sort of a a program for people who have problem use instead of arrest. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's a good ally to have. Is he part of the Ministry of Health, or is the Ministry of Health the um, body that's trying to get pr kratom prohibited? Over here, basically, we have the thing that Mr. Vobodzio is part of the government, but he's not part of any ministry. He okay. has a rank that is equal to minister, but he doesn't have department underneath him. He has a team, like he has an interdisciplinary team of people who are working on drug policies but they do not belong to any particular ministry. He's directly responsible to the prime minister of the Czech Republic. And are there large problems with drug use, like methamphetamines and opioids in the uh, Czech Republic? As far as I know, there were some big problems with opioids, like, for example, methamphetamine, at the beginning of 1990s. But this was essentially a very much relevant problem for entire region of Central Eastern Europe. Okay. But so let's say right now it seems that the problem has been more or less tackled. And like as far as I know, because like Czech Republic is a fairly small country, it's just you now 10.8 million people. Well, say like officially there are something like 50,000 people in uh, rehab at this moment and mm -hmm. most of them are in rehab for the opioid addiction. How long has Kratom been popular in the Czech Republic? This is a question that I cannot answer like fully. As far as I know, Kratom has, a, has been present in Czech Republic for at least better part of the last 10 years. So we could say it's been like since 2009 or 2010. And it's been gaining mainstream popularity recently. Mm -hmm. So according to estimates that we have from our partners from Czechoslovakian Kratom Association and their vendors, uh, we can say that there is something around 150,000 people, adult Czech citizens, who use Kratom on a regular basis. How old are the people that use Kratom? Because I know here it tends to be more middle-aged people that use it rather than young people. Mm, this is actually fairly interesting because the demographic is definitely much different than the in the US. Mm. Um, what we know about people who use Kratom in uh, Europe, these are mostly people in uh, their 20s or early 30s. Mm. Most of them are, those are people who are fairly educated. So those are people who will at least have a bachelor's or master's degree. And surprisingly, most of them are men. 
when we spoke earlier, you said that they use it for recreational purposes. Yes, like as far as we can say, majority of people now who use Kratom in Czech Republic are people who use it for recreational purposes. However, there is a still fairly high amount of people who use it as an alternative towards their pain medication. And for example, there is this one story of one uh, young guy. I don't really know his name. He has been born with cerebral palsy. Essentially, dude is paralyzed from waist down mm. and is suffering from shivers. He has a lot of problems. And basically, he has been taking quite a lot of different medicines and nothing that was available on the market was really helping him. And uh, there was a time when he was considering suicide. But the moment that he started using Kratom, he started competing in uh, bench pressing uh, competitions. Wow. So uh, he became a power lifter, despite that he's being paralyzed and so uh, has problems speaking. Uh, like this will be a story that our Czech partners will make available sometime next month. Hmm. So I will definitely now share that video with you. How do people purchase Kratom in Czech Republic? Pretty much the same way how it is being done in the rest of Europe. Like majority of sales is relegated to online sales. Okay. So basically those are like the sales that are conducted online and people are importing, of course, Kratom from Indonesia. Soon also it's going to be Thailand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, there is just one problematic thing that we've been working together with Czech Kratom Association that has been a very big problem for all of us. Like it was basically a problem for the government, Czech Kratom Association and us as European Kratom Alliance, that there are certain vendors in uh, Czech Republic who sell Kratom and also CBD uh, marijuana uh, using vending machines. Like they have exploited a loophole you know, that exists in law where Kratom mm -hmm. couldn't be really regulated as either food or any kind of other substance because until now Kratom has been uh, available for purchase as a souvenir. So there was no controls over that who can buy it. And often we heard about situations where school children uh, were able to buy Kratom Oh, from the vending machines. And so yeah. right now we are working on removal of those vending machines mm -hmm. or eventually we are working on like new type of vending machines that will be able to verify somebody's age. Okay, yeah, I was going to say, I'm sure those vending machines don't ask for ID or anything. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> like, that was our big problem because, like, the reason, main reason why actually we started regulation of Kratom in Czech Republic is that problem that Kratom has been available for minors. And since there is no regulation in Europe that would actually... Uh, allow for age verification for no sales of Kratom. That was our main reason behind why we actually started working over there as a first country. And it looks like in the news that there's a moral panic about children being able to access Kratom. I've seen, I put one article through the translator. It was uh, titled, Czech children have taken a liking to the dangerous drug tradem that can be found almost anywhere. And in, in one of the quotes from this article was, the alarming thing is that every fifth high school student in our country has had experience with this drug. Is that true? Or is, are they accurate there when they say that? I cannot really verify the truthfulness of that quote. Yeah. Like the risk assessment that we had access to that was conducted by the government of Czech Republic mentioned that some school children have access to Kratom, but it didn't specify the number. And uh, ourselves, we cannot really verify this data, but it is a problematic thing. So basically, we're trying to limit those sales. And in the last couple of months, our partners from the Czechoslovakian Kratom Association and also mm -hmm. Czech vendors have limited the sales and availability of Kratom through the channels where minors would have access to it. Yeah. So this is successfully and steadily being cut. 
or regarding just the me uh, like the media and moral panic in Czech Republic. Uh, this is true that at the beginning of this year, there was quite a lot of moral panic uh, about Kratom because there were some articles that were comparing Kratom literally to heroin and some more dangerous substances. But at this moment, the media narrative is slowly shifting into towards more neutral and more informative mostly thanks to Lukasz Pfeffer, who is a spokesperson for Czechoslovakian uh, Kratom Association. The fact that we've been able to implement a certain media strategy, so we are in contact with Czech press and we are trying to establish more truthful narrative about what is Kratom, what it can do, what it cannot do, and also what are the dangers and uh, also benefits of Kratom. These other uh, organizations that are active in, in che- you mentioned the Czech, Czechoslovak Kratom Association, that's CSAK. Yes. And there's also the Pirate Party, which is a political party that's, that is pushing for Kratom legalization. Can you talk about that a little bit? Generally, when it comes to our partners in Czech Republic, uh, we are in very much close collaboration with the Drug National Policy Coordinator, uh, as I mentioned before. Yeah. And our main political ally is the Pirate Party, a very interesting political grouping Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to European political scene, but uh, I don't really want to bore you over here and uh, I don't want to nerd out uh, about that. But uh, let's say they are being very supportive. And over here, I would have to give very special thanks to Yana Mihalidou, who is uh, one of the vice presidents of Pirate Party in Czech Republic. And she's very much avid advocate of harm reduction. And when it comes to Czechoslovakian Kratom Association, this is actually a little bit of coincidence. They have been created around the same time as we, so as we as the European Kratom Alliance. Our organizations were created parallel to each other, but thankfully we learned about each other's existence very early on. So we are pretty much in very close collaboration about developing future of Kratom because, let's say, the legislation that we are working right now in Czech Republic will be the blueprint for regulation of Kratom in uh, different European countries. So we want to make it as good as possible without having it adjusted and uh, without making not too many differences uh, with other European countries. So it's easier to actually create uniform GMP formulation across the entire continent. Yeah, and and you mentioned it would be classified under psychomodular substance instead of like psychoactive. And you mentioned before this would also be like cannabis, psychedelic mushrooms, kratom. Mm -hmm. Uh, So what would that look like? Would it be sold as a food under that law or does it have its own category? Uh, No, no, no. This would be a separate category. Because mm. regarding legal kinks of how we should and how Kratom uh, could be you know, legalized in Europe, well, we should primarily deal with European Union and European Union's agencies. So like over here, we would have to deal primarily with the European Food Administration, sorry, European Food Safety Administration, uh, European Center for Monitoring Drugs and Addiction, and also European Medicine Agency. And then Kratom would have to be legalized under you know, something what is known as novel food. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a substance that has not been present on the European market prior to year 1997. Because like the first imports of Kratom that we are aware of that were happening in Europe were like maybe 2001 to 2005. Mm-hmm. Like this is when Kratom was appearing first in the Netherlands. Uh, however, given the current uh, political situation and the brilliant minds in the uh, Czech Republic, we came to conclusion it would be easier to actually create a new legal category. So this would be psychomodular substances. Mm-hmm. And under this category, we can create a very regulated and very restricted market inside Czech Republic, where sales of Kratom 
are handled very much similarly to say sales of tobacco or alcohol. So like each of the psychomodulatory substances will have slightly different rules how they are being handled. But for example, Kratom is going to be handled in a very similar nature as tobacco or alcohol. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And I, and I really think we need something like that here as well, because it's not exactly a food. It's not, they're not enforcing it under the dietary supplements regulation. So do you think that m might be a model that other European countries might follow? Yeah, like definitely this is something that we will be striving towards to. Like mm -hmm. the moment when we will be done with a regulation of Kratom inside Czech Republic, uh, we will start putting you know, similar measures in some other countries. So we will start working towards other you know, European countries and we will see where we can actually introduce similar type of legislation. That's great. I was looking at the statements of the Pirate Party and the, and the CSKA, and both of them had a comments about information. I'll, I'll read the CSKAs. People don't even know what Kratom is really for. The current legal framework does not allow this information to be communicated, as Kratom would otherwise fall into one of the categories in which its existence is prohibited, or the publication and dissemination of such information could even be considered a criminal offense. Is this why vendors are selling it in a lot of Europe as not for human consumption? Mm, partially. Like, mm, generally, say, legal situation of Kratom in Europe is patchy. Mm -hmm. Like, as you know, you've been doing research yourself. Uh, certain countries are prohibiting Kratom. Other countries tolerate Kratom as something that exists, but it exists in gray zone. Yeah. And uh, as I mentioned before, basically Kratom should be, or actually that's one of the venues that is possible, Kratom could be regulated as novel food. And the way how it works in Europe, we would have to provide a number of human safety studies, similarly to that what American Kratom Association uh, uh, is trying to do in the USA. Mm -hmm. So we would have to go through a very similar process of approving Kratom as food under similar procedure as it goes with FDA. So over here, we would need to go with a procedure that should be approved by European Food Safety Administration. However, given the current political setting, uh, when it comes to European Food Safety Administration, they definitely do not have a very positive opinion about Kratom. Mm -hmm. uh, about six months ago, they have released a, a statement uh, or uh, let's call it a safety assessment of Kratom, uh, which consisted of uh, very brief research of like different uh, internet articles. It was basically a mashup, sorry, a mashup of like different quotes that you could find on the first page of results when you Google Kratom in English. So there was like newest signs on Kratom, like how addictive it is or you know, what is the potential for harm reduction, uh, what is the difference between like different alkaloids, like you know, how mitragynin and 7-hydroxymitragynin are interacting with the human body and uh, for example, uh, what are the safety models that have been conducted on animals or uh, human safety studies that have been conducted in recent years in the US are completely not taken into equation uh, in uh, the safety assessment. So generally with the current uh, political situation with uh, European Food Safety Administration, we opted out that it will be better to try to regulate it country by country uh, using different methods than uh, regulating Kratom as food. I'm looking at the Pirate Party statement now, press release I think they put out um, in October. I'll just read from it. It's also necessary for society to be informed about the effects, possible risks, and principles of safe use of Kratom. This can be done both with the help of a targeted information campaign, but also through regulation and having the information on the package. Have you spoken with her, uh, I think it's uh, Janko, 
Michelada about uh, yeah, I probably pronounced her name yeah. wrong. Yeah. About what what that information campaign would look like. No, honestly, we haven't really spoken about that with Yana. We haven't really spoken about like how this not targeted ad campaign could look like. Mm-hmm. But generally, like as you said in your previous question, and also when you quoted the uh, statement by CSAK, of the whole problem is that in current framework, when kratom is not regulated as food, we can like vendors uh, cannot really advertise it as for human consumption because then yeah. it's unregulated yeah. novel food, and this leads to plethora of like different problems. But for example, uh, as uh, CSEK or as uh, European Kratom Alliance, we are free to inform about benefits of Kratom and also like uh, how to dose it and so on. But for example, the legislation that we are uh, introducing together with the uh, government of Czech Republic uh, allows for full information and full disclosure about benefits and risk of kratom and also recommended dosage and so on. I mean, because that's basically what we're trying to do with kratom science is provide information about kratom so people can make a good choice whether to use it or not to use it. I would be interested in what anybody else does and what works and uh, trying to apply that to what we're doing here. Uh, like so far. I have to say you guys are light years ahead of that, what we can do over here. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. So uh, you told me you recently at a, I, I don't know, I think it may, might have been Prague, but it was a uh, drug policy conference, and you met uh, a couple guys from the DEA. Oh, yeah. Like, I had a very brief run into. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, yeah. basically, uh, that was in second half of November. It was essentially end of November. Uh, there is like this very big uh, drug conference organized by the European Center for Monitoring Drugs and Addiction, so EMCDDA. They are organizing like this conference, and basically that was like one of the bigger conferences. And there were people from like different regulatory agencies. Practically, it was half of the world. There were people from Canada. There were people from the U.S. There were some people from all over Europe, a couple of Australians, even for some reason, there were even Chinese over there when they normally don't participate in this kind of conferences. Yeah. And so uh, what was really surprising for me at the time uh, was that there were no really representatives of private industry. Hmm. Because like a big part of the conference was, for example, dedicated to psychedelics. So especially like you know, psilocybin and magic mushrooms. Also, there was big focus on MDMA. But there were no companies that would be uh, conducting research. The only people who were present during that conference were people from either you no know, regulatory agencies or scientists. So, like, my run into with DEA was very brief, so I didn't even manage to exchange, like, any contacts with them or talk much more in depth. But I can tell you that there were quite a lot of meetings behind closed door during that conference when they were talking about regulation and prohibition of different substances worldwide. So definitely some kind of systematic solutions were being worked on during that conference. We know like the FDA and I guess the DEA, maybe not so much, want they're the groups that want to ban Kratom in the United States. In Czech Republic, who wants to see it banned? Basically like I shouldn't really talk about that who wants to have okay. it banned because partially these are people with whom we are still collaborating and I want to have them in uh, our good, like I want to be in good graces with them. Okay. So like for now we are talking about regulation and we are still, you know, in the middle of the negotiations uh, with the Ministry of Health, uh, with the Ministry of Industry and Trade in Czech Republic, trying to convince them that it would be much more beneficial 
especially that you know we are you know, approaching economic downturn so regulating a new branch of industry will definitely be beneficial for you know, Czech Republic as such because it will be a moderate boost to their GDP but also it will allow for things that will be beneficial for people because when people can use Kratom in a safe way then we are eliminating all the host of problems that come with well, having unsafe and untested product. So like over here, we are making sure that every kind of Kratom that will be sold in uh, Czech Republic will be fully tested and you will be 100% uh, sure what you are buying. Yeah, that's good. And it's rationally the best option. So we'll know whether there will be a law to regulate Kratom or a law to prohibit Kratom uh, or a, maybe a bill in Parliament by the end of January, did you say? Yes, like by the end of January, we should be more or less aware of the results of the interministerial talks, because like right now, uh, there are plenty of interministerial meetings regarding Kratom. Last one uh, will happened like two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So you now, for example, you now we should be expecting like a press conference by CSA, uh, CSAK. I think on the twelfth of January. Okay. Or where they will be talking with press and certain politicians about the regulation of Kratom. How likely do you think it is that there will be a uh, regulation bill? Uh, well, at this moment, we are staying very positive, like we are being positive, but we are being very cautious. Okay. Because this is a very new thing. Like this is also like Mr. Vodzil, Janka, uh, Lokash, and all other people who are involved in uh, works on this legislation project are riding their hopes on changing the uh, landscape of uh, psychotropic substances all over the world. Because if there will be a bill that can regulate sales of not only Kratom, but also magic mushrooms, cannabis, and so on, uh, then we are creating something new that has been not done anywhere around the world. Mm -hmm. Because, say, like or regulating cannabis alone is completely different or when, uh, for example, you are trying to regulate also magic mushrooms, like Netherlands uh, has kind of a developed market for this kind of substances, but the regulation is incomplete. Yeah, so I guess the third option is maybe they will have that in Parliament, but it won't be passed, and then and then you still have the gray area. We will be working very hard. Yeah. Uh, to lobby politicians and also be in touch with media about you know, making sure that politicians know that one and a half percent of Czech population, like overall Czech population, mm -hmm. and this will be like probably three to five percent of adult uh, people who are voters, take Kratom on a regular basis. Like mm -hmm. three to five percent of voters especially educated voters, yeah, that's a very big number. That's a good incentive for the uh, politicians. Yeah. Also, just to uh, bring another uh, digression, uh, like, for example, number of people who smoke cannabis in uh, Czech Republic is much, much higher than, uh, for example, people who use Kratom. Because, like, as I said, this is like 150,000 people who use Kratom. But the number of people who smoke cannabis on a regular basis uh, is uh, around twenty to thirty percent. Yeah, that's that's so, a pretty big one, big number. Yeah. So since kratom and cannabis will be put in the same legal category uh, underneath this regulation, I think we have a fairly high good chances of making it uh, happen. You can get the ca cannabis people behind that. Is there like a cannabis organization in, in Czech Republic uh, to promote those rights? Mm, yes, like I am aware that they exist, but yeah. so far I haven't had the occasion to actually meet them. Yeah, it seems that they'll get behind that law. 
Yeah, like like definitely Pirate Party knows quite a lot uh, about that. Like also a funny story that I can tell you is that when I was in Prague at the beginning of uh, November, I arrived just one day after uh, Cannabis Con, uh, which is like the biggest cannabis convention in Europe. It was happening in Prague. And, and so uh, as far as the European Kratom Alliance, you said now you have your first employee? Mm, yeah, it's like basically we are slowly expanding our workforce. That's good. And uh, we are growing as the organization because like uh, we are still a very small organization. So uh, ever since we were able to finally uh, deal with like our most basic problems are going, not being able to have the bank account because yeah. we want to regulate Kratom. Yeah. Like, believe me or not, but the uh, we tried like about 20, 20, maybe 30 different banks. Like, honestly, I really lost count. Like we tried a <laughs> lot of the different banks and fintech organizations, and we would be always so uh, uh, refused to have a bank account because we were considered a uh, no, high risk organization. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot yeah. like uh, creative vendors can't use uh, credit cards to uh, sell their products <laughs> here at least. Yeah, like the like this is really insane. Like this is honestly really insane because say a lot of Kratom vendors here in Europe, well, they do not have problems with having bank accounts. Like they have bank accounts and they are functioning. They are still considered uh, in certain countries, like for example, Netherlands, as a uh, no, high risk clients, but they still have uh, their bank accounts. And we as an organization that generally is working with uh, regulatory bodies on legislation, we yeah. couldn't have it because like, I, I just don't get it. You should be able to, because people advocate for all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty strange. But do you have a, do you guys have a donation link that somebody could uh, donate to the European mm -hmm. Kratom Alliance if they wanted to? Yeah, it's like, no, essentially, if you go to our website, well, we still have to polish it a little bit. EKA.EU slash support. Like you go over there and then you can find our PayPal and also our bank account number. We are essentially like definitely growing. And uh, if there's anyone in Europe who is listening to your show and say they want to uh, volunteer uh, their skills because we are trying to uh, expand our website. So we are now trying on expanding our website into Spanish and German and also Czech. So if there is anyone now who is listening to us who can volunteer their skills with something, we are always happy to accept some volunteers because we will be also trying to build a movement around ICA. So we will try to build something similar to like Kratom Advocates, so like in uh, American Kratom Association has done it a couple of years ago. We will be trying to do a very similar thing over here. So if there is anyone who is listening to us and they would want to start like an you know, organization in their own country, they can always get in touch with us. All right. Thanks a lot, Jacob. That was Jacob Gentala, co-founder of the European Kratom Alliance. To support them, go to eka.eu slash support. You can PayPal a donation to contact at eka.eu. You can support us by giving us a like, subscribe, rate, review, share, especially share this on social media. The music is Memories of Thailand by Risey. The Kratom Science Podcast is produced by me, Brian Gallagher, for KratomScience.com. Take care.